Dwarf Lab have sent me a telescope to review. As a landscape photographer, let's see what this can do. So in the pack, what you get is obviously the telescope, but so many more accessories as well. I'll open it up. So in the package, you obviously get the telescope and a nicely tight, compact, padded case. And you also get loads of accessories for different types of photography. So I'll open the nice case and you can see the telescope. There we go. Nice and compact. As you can see, there's two lenses. There's a telescope lens and a wide field angle lens. To control this telescope, you simply just connect it to your phone, which is really, really easy. I've done it before and I'll show you just in a few minutes. So that's the telescope, but what do you put the telescope on? Well, they've kindly put in a little tripod as well, so literally the telescope sits on your tripod just like that. So it's very, very compact, very easy to travel with. So also in the pack, you don't just get astrophotography things, you get things for the daytime as well. So this little packet has got filters and magnifying glasses and things like that, what you can do through the daytime and pretty much just photograph anything you want, really. In the telescope, there's loads of features. You can do time lapses, video, obviously pictures, there's loads of different options, I'll pop them all on the screen just now but yeah, here's, here's all the filter things and I'll show you just now so look at all the filters you get so you even get some filters for your mobile phone as well which is really handy and all these little filters clip onto the telescope very very easily and you can photograph things like the sun so it's a very very easy telescope to use, very good for beginners pretty much connects to your phone, your phone controls everything and walks you through everything step by step. So I'm going to go on the field now and try and capture probably the moon. This is how easy it is. The moon's high enough now in the sky. Pop it down on this flat surface. Oh, it's turned on. So it goes this kind of green light. Right, so now if you watch the telescope, I can move it. Whee! Right, now I just need to get the lens up. Here it is, the lens is coming up just now. And it's pointing. There it goes, it's pointing up to Venus now. And then all I'll do is just press focus, which is on the right hand side. Auto focus. That's Sometimes the focus isn't perfect and you have to help it a wee bit. There we go, so I'm focused into Venus and I'll just take a simple picture and that's it saved to my camera, which is really good. So then you just kind of go to your gallery and then it will be there on your gallery and you just download that to your phone, but it's not the best picture. Right, so we'll turn it round to the moon. Okay, so that's on the moon now, and then if you go to the left hand side of the screen you get all your settings. Aye, there we go. Boom! Come out of the settings, align it more. And then literally just take a, a single image and it says shot success and then that's literally it so you so obviously it's so much quicker but literally just connect it with your bluetooth and then point your camera at the moon and you've got a live picture of you've got a live like feed of the moon on your mobile and you can it's great because you can just literally take a picture of the moon say if it was a lunar eclipse take a picture of it and then you can just post it on social media or whatever straight away you don't have to you know do file transfers and go to the laptop and stuff so it's really really handy I'm very happy with the quality of the of the moon you can literally just go onto it wow that's really really good and then you just save it onto your phone so you just use the tick tick button tick boxes and then just kind of tick and then downloading success your media was successfully saved and then you go in your gallery and it's straight there. Huh. That's phenomenal. I'm over at the west coast of Scotland now in Rannoch Moor. We've got crystal clear skies throughout the day, so I'm going to test this dwarf telescope to the sun because the kit comes with a solar filter. So let's set it up. All you do is take it out of the packaging, get the wee tripod that comes with the kit. Put that somewhere. Screw the telescope on using a couple of threads. 
make sure it's all secure and on a level surface. And now all you have to do is pretty much connect it to your phone, which is really, really simple. So I'll do a screen recording so you can see what I'm doing. So you go on the Dwarf Lab app, press the button on the telescope, it'll go green somewhere. I think it's a double tap. Double tap the green button and it'll power on. So it's now connected to the phone and you use the wide field view to see where you pretty much are. But first I need to get the telescope actually up. So the scopes are coming up just now, you can see the two scopes. So one's a wide field one and one's obviously the telescope one. So you zoom all the way up. And because I'm shooting the sun, I'm going to pop the solar filter on just now. So the solar filter comes with this kit. It's like a ND minus one million. <laughs> so uh, definitely quite a stop down. And all you pretty much do is just clip clip the, this onto the, the scopes and it's magnetic, it just seals in. Take one of the NDs and then simply just screw it into the telescope. There we go, that's it connected. So now we find by using the wide angle view, we look around the sky and find the sun. So it will blow out obviously on the wide field. But then when you spot it in your there we go, so there's the sun. And it's obviously not focused just correctly yet. It's a wee bit fiddly again into the view. It just shows you how easy this is just to get pictures on your phone. Really simple just to get an image of celestial bodies like the moon, the sun, straight on your phone. Uh, so we'll try and focus that, auto focus. So what I normally go to to correct the exposure is the exposure time. So just get that to whatever setting is correct at the time. There we go. And there we go, as you can see, there is the sun. Live through the dwarf telescope and I've lost it. A wee bit fiddly, so you can auto focus, which does normally a pretty good job, or you can manually focus with the two plus or the minuses. But the auto focus does a pretty good job. And then all you do is pretty much just go to the photo settings and then take pictures using the big green button. You can take a big video, you just press it, it records video, and then you can obviously stop it whenever. But fantastic, and then you go down to the bottom right where it says gallery. And then you'll see all the pictures of the sun that you've just taken. Click on one, and then you can simply just save that to your phone. And then you've got it straight on your phone straight away. So you can post on social media straight away. So there's no faffing about, you don't have to go back to the laptop to uh, process your images. So, really, really cool app. And I'll pop the final image up now that you can see the sunspots taken with this very easy setup. So obviously the telescope doesn't just do astro things, it also does loads of daytime things. So I'm going to zoom into the mountain over there in the distance and see how good the quality is of zooming into you know distant things during the day like mountains. Yet again I'm using the wide angle to see where I am and then zooming in. Oh. So we go to as you can see, it zooms in perfectly and you know it's a nice picture of the cliffs. So it'd be really cool to see of a moonset, you could get a good moonset using this camera, using the telescope um, over like distant mountains. Okay, so what I'm planning to do now is capture like, a time lapse of the moon setting behind the mountains behind me. The sun is just about setting, so getting it all set up and yeah, trying out the time lapse feature. Just setting up a weight balance that I prefer. I like the sun when it looks like the sun, when it's a wee bit orangey, so you just set the weight balance to however you prefer. Right, I'm just going to press it. And I guess that's it, I just leave it now. So now I'll just be quiet and hopefully this time lapse works really well. And when it ends, I'll show you the final result. Okay, so we're under the stars yet again, and um, we're here to capture the moon, this time with the Dwarf Telescope. So yet again, I've set, set the whole telescope up, and it's a thin crescent moon, so we're going to get the nice earth shine in it as well. 
So I'll just find the moon wherever we are. Here we go. Here we go. Find find the moon. Put it in uh, in the center. Focus it. Autofocus does a really good job. So now obviously to get the moon in perfect exposure I'm going to muck about with exposure time. There we go. And just pretty much play around with it, play around with the settings. There we go and you just, you just play about with it, play about with exposure time, play about with the focus and then you'll finally get a good image of what you want. And simply just take pictures. Easy as that. And then that's straight onto your phone, straight onto your camera gallery. Now there is earth shine as well, so to try and capture earth shine, you obviously have to, because earth shine's really faint, you have to make uh, the image a wee bit brighter. So what I'll do is go down exposure time. So maybe do a couple of seconds. So say 2.5 seconds. Press that. And hopefully that's worked. So I've played about with the settings, the exposure time, and then you can finally see, I'll pop it up on the screen, you can see the earth shine of the moon, uh, which is really, really cool. I would still say DSLRs would do a bit of a better job, but maybe it's just my inexperience and you have to play about with the settings a wee bit more, because there's loads of settings and loads of tracking options you can do with this thing. Um, I'm just pretty lazy and I can't be bothered like learning at all because it's just, you know, when you get to DSLRs with sky trackers, it's so simple. This seems to be sometimes a wee bit pernickety, and um, this is the only downside I would say of it, it just seems to be a wee bit pernickety, but when you learn it, you'll be fine. So playing a wee bit more about this with the telescope, try to do wide angle astrophotography and sorting out all the, the stacking and the tracking. It's just, I would say it's a wee bit technical. Um, it's very easy to set up on your phone, it connects to your phone no problem, and if you knew what you were doing, absolutely fine. But when you've got, when I'm used to like say DSLRs and Ioptrons and sky trackers, it's just so much simpler just putting a DSLR or a mirrorless camera on a sky tracker or an Ioptron. You literally just line up to the North Star and then the whole thing does it all for you. This just seems to be a wee bit more technical. And if you're into deep sky photography, you would know exactly what to do. I am 100% not a deep sky astrophotographer, so I get scared when everything's technical and stacking and tracking and stuff. It's just not my sort of cup of tea. So. If you're a landscape photographer, wide angle photographer like myself, I don't know if I would go and get this. It's good for like solar photography and moon photography. I'm going to definitely love trying it out with m more of that moonrises, sunsets and stuff like that. Um, it's really, really cool. I'm going to definitely use that. But I'm definitely a wide angle astrophotographer, so this kind of scares me a wee bit. So really good for the telescope point of view, but wide angle and different thing features on this light tracking and stuff I do think sometimes dioptron and a DSLR would be probably the better option uh, but yeah if you're a deep sky astrophotographer definitely you'll know what to do and you'll know what all this means but that's just not my cup of tea not my genre I cannot kind of review this on the deep sky of it because it's just not my sort of thing but like landscape astrophotography really good for kind of the moon sets and sunrises and stuff. The solar filter is really, really good with this. Really impressed with the solar filter. So, like lunar eclipses, solar eclipses would be brilliant on this thing. So yeah, I'm just gonna stick to using this for the moon and the sun, uh, and that's pretty much it, I would think. It's really good. I really love the feature how it goes straight to your camera, uh, straight to your phone. Sorry, really, really cool feature. But yeah, as you can see, captured Earth shine with this telescope. Fantastic. So that's my little review on the Dwarf Telescope. Really, really good for beginners and families, say going out camping or something like that, just to enjoy the stars, photograph the moon, things like that. But if you're an experienced photographer and you like your DSLRs, mirrorless and big, you know, big setups, I do think it's a bit, not wasted on you, but I think it's a bit under, under like your knowledge sort of thing. So I think it's good for beginners, but if you know what you're doing, you'd want a wee bit more uh, quality and and easier features for like wide field astrophotography as well. I'm wide field, as I said many times, so uh, it just didn't do it for me. But uh, moon rises, moon sets, sunsets, 
fantastic great for beginners and so many new loads of features on the dwarf as well to do other things during the day as well so really really good I'll link everything below in the wee description thing just so you can like see everything about the dwarf and see what you think about it go onto the websites see like the price of it and um, how to get it sent out to you and it is yeah if you're up that street and you want to get something good for the family or you're a beginner starting out a telescope and you want something just on your phone without all these big cameras fantastic go for it but yeah thank you very much dwarf for sending me the telescope it was really good really cool experience and thoroughly enjoyed you know the process of working with a telescope that connects to your phone really really good idea and it's good that astrophotography is kind of getting more easier um, to use like on your phone everyone's got a phone so really really good so yeah thank you again everything's down in the description if you want to have a look thank you for watching cheers